Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 35. Wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. And we've been talking about Jerusalem. We've been talking about the city. How splendor that God had seen to make her. After her root stock wasn't so well. She was a rejected nation, area. God chose her, married her, gave her jewels, gave her riches, gave her fruits, abundance. And she took her beauty, she took her, her fame, she took all she had of God and turned it to harlotry of the nations in sin. This is the story of America. Thus saith the Lord God. We're serious now. Because of thy filthiness. Notice filthiness. Hollywood has made movies about harlots and whores. How wonderful, how great in majesty their life has become. And God calls it filthiness. God calls it sin. Because thy filthiness was poured out. Thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lover. Now this nakedness is not the nakedness of taking off your clothes, but everything of what this city is, has become. All the world sees. And when the Christian realizes, got to know, when you are living your sinful life, you're not hiding it. All the world sees. Now they may not know what's going on, but they see your face. They see the misery. They see your countenance. And the nakedness discovered through the whoredoms with thy lovers. With all the idols, there's a sin. There's what God told Israel not to have. And we read from Jeremiah, we read from Ezekiel that the city of Jerusalem is surrounded on every street of idols. Imagery in the temple. And by the blood of thy children, that's murder. You call America what you will, you say, God bless America, not with abortion clinics that are legal. God ain't going to bless a nation that murders. Not when you have on death row from sea to signing sea, though it's called an ocean. You got people in correctional facilities that the Bible says you are to put them to death and you feed them at three meals a day. And give them recreation. Don't tell me I was in the prison ministry. In the prison ministry, there were a couple murderers. And they were living. There are crimes described in the law, though we're not under the law, but to show the attitude of God, that you ought to be put to death for that. Not in America. In other countries. Which thou didst give unto them. Wait a minute. The blood of your children you gave unto to the nations. You sacrificed your children of murder to other nations such as Vietnam, Korea. World War One, World War 
two wars that America had no business putting herself into and you sacrificed the blood of your children? Now, a Christian is to obey the government. The government says, go to war. You go to war. But that leader is going to have to give an account. Why did you have that war? God will weigh out all the lies of the Civil War. Oh, we went against war for England because we didn't want to pay a tea tax. And how many taxes are we paying now to our government? How many American lives destroyed? Right or wrong, I'm American, I'm glad to be. Yeah, okay. I don't see America in the Bible. I see Israel. I see Gentiles. And I see Christians. And I stand on the half of Christians, not Gentiles. And I pray for the nation of Israel. Oh, you don't care about America? I witness to Americans. I preach on the streets of America. Don't tell me. Behold, therefore I will gather all thy lovers whom thou hast taken pleasure. Hebrew says sin has a pleasure for a season. Whoopee! Hurrah! <laughs> Drink your alcohol now because there's no alcohol in hell. Party hardy now because there's no partying in hell. Enjoy your rotten, filthy, worldly music because that's not there's no singing in hell. Oh yeah, sex is pleasurable. So she comes knocking on the door. Hey, this is your child. Take him. I don't want him. And all them that thou hast loved. Again, this is a city. All the neighboring cities are about. They're, they're romancing Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is romancing them. With all them that thou hatest. Oh, God... <laughs> Look at the devil. God says, I'm going to draw all those that you love. Oh, by the way, I'm also going to draw all those that you hate. You better see the judgment of the great white throne judgment and the judgment seat of Christ when God will bring forth all your love and all your hate. I will either gather them round about against thee the ones that you love, they're going to turn. They're going to go against you. You thought they loved you. They don't love you. And will discover thy nakedness unto them. That they may see all thy nakedness. That's the great white throne judgment. When God calls up for that lost soul, he's going to call all those you hate and all those you love. And before all kinds of people to save the lost family, friends, co-workers, you're going to stand before God and all men naked. What you thought, how you thought, why, who, what, where, when. I will judge thee as a woman plural, that break wedlock, that, that broke in their marriage. Destroyed the man they, they married. Destroyed the children. Destroyed the family. And all that is around the wedlock. And shed blood, murder, are judged. You know how the law judged them? If you were found guilty, you were stoned to death. We'll see that in a moment. 
And I will give thee blood in fury and jealousy. What's that blood? The Chaldean army is coming. The Babylonian army is coming. There's going to be blood. There's going to be destruction. I will also give thee into their hand, Babylonians, Chaldeans. And they shall throw down thy eminent place. If that's the temple, the temple is destroyed. Ezra tells us. And shall break down thy high places. That's their eminent places too. Places of worship, your temples, your idols, your steeples, your towers, your high rises, high places of worship, are all going to be destroyed. They shall strip thee of all, strip thee of also of thy clothes. And shall take away the fair jewels. And leave thee naked and bare lamentations. You're going to eat your own children. But lamentation says you're going to buy your own water. America, you got to buy your own water. You got to go to the store to buy water. I'll even take away your toilet paper. I guarantee at this time and right now, I guarantee the pawn stores are busy with people bringing in their jewels for money. People are out of work. They don't want to work because I don't want to get a shot. I'll give up my job for a shot. Uh, how much can I get for this ring? How much can I get for this necklace? And you're going broke. You're going poor. No, it's okay. The government will give us a stimulus check. Yeah, they keep waving that stimulus check in front of you. We've had a couple times where, where we take that free piece of cheese and we put it in a mousetrap. And then we take that dead mouse and we throw them out. And we don't have no more mice. They shall also bring up a company against thee. That's the Babylonians Chaldeans. Jeremiah tells us, they come. And they shall stone thee. Huh, we'll go back to verse 38. That's what happened to a harlotry. Verse 39. The Babylonians will bring upon the, the Jewish people the Jewish condemnation, the Jewish capital punishment. And thrust thee through with swords. So we get a gruesome detail of Jeremiah and Ezekiel what happens when the Babylonian army comes. They shall burn thy houses with fire. They shall execute judgments, plural, upon thee in the sight of many women. Now that many women, well, we've been talking about Jerusalem, so we're talking about the neighboring cities and towns. They're going to watch what happens to this city. I will cause thee to cease from playing the harlot. You know, Jerusalem's playing the harlot today with the United Nations. Oh, yeah, we'll give them a little more land. <laughs> we'll give them a little more for peace. God told those Jews, you are not to sell my land, God speaking. So every time they give up a little, they're violating the law. Because it's written in the law, God says, that's my land, don't you give it up. Don't you remove that ancient landmark. Now, we're to pray for the Jews. We are to pray for the salvation of the Jews. We are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But those Jews are sinning against God. And we see it in Jeremiah and Ezekiel. These are God's people. And if God's going to do it to his people, what do you think he's going to do to Germany and England and America and Russia and Africa? Which are not God's people. 
In order for America to be God's people, we all have to be 100% Christian or 100% Jewish, and we're neither nor. Because the only God's people are the Jewish people, but right now, the only people that are God's people right now are those who are born again saved. That's God's people. That ain't 100% America. Come on down on a Saturday morning. I'll take you where people hate Jesus Christ. You don't have to go far. A street preacher, street ministry, a person who goes out with the gospel of Jesus Christ knows not all love Jesus Christ. And thou also shalt give no hire anymore. That, that's going to be the millennium. When Jesus Christ. Because they're selling themselves out today. They're not going in the full power of God. Because right now they're on a shelf. Individually they can be saved, but at corporate right now they're up on the shelf. But God ain't finished with them. So will I make my theory toward thee to rest? That rest is the subject of the book of Hebrews. That rest is the millennial rest. Listen, you can't say that's today because they got seven years tribulation coming, three and a half of the late of the great tribulation. <laughs> now you ain't no rest. Even when we believe a cell preacher, some of us believe that's not a rest when they're going out and getting food by, by, by the hazard of their lives. My jealousy, look at that, God is jealous and we read that through, shall depart from thee. Why is God jealous? Because they got gods and goddesses. Like the church today. I will be quiet. That's not now. That's not then. Listen, even Nebuchadnezzar, uh, even Nehemiah and Ezra did not have rest. They had Sam Ballot. They had one point in time that they gave up building the temple and God had to send the, the minor prophets with a major message. Get back to work. You know, the church is at a period of, of quiet and rest, and God's like, get up and go to the world. But we're going to celebrate the birthday of Jesus. Well, guess what? It ain't my birthday. You want to give me a gift? Don't bring me copy paper. Don't bring me toilet paper. Don't bring me clean supplies. Bring me lost souls. Go in the world and preach the gospel. But we got a movie. I didn't say you got a movie. Come to church. I never said come to church. And the only way you can come to church is come through the cross of Jesus Christ. That's how you come to church. Boy, isn't the church in the period of Judah in Jerusalem today? Ooh, things are great. Well, you know, we haven't had revivals in such a long time. Because, you know, we haven't given it all to the Queen of Heaven. <laughs> yes. Yes. Whew. That's why people hate me. So I'll make my period to rest, my jealousy depart from thee, and I will be quiet and will be no more angry. What is that reference? That's out in the eternity. 
Oh, I'm sure God was pleased when Ezra and Nehemiah came back. They found out they'd been married all these different uh, mixed marriages and that, and they couldn't even speak Hebrew and they didn't even know God. I'm sure God was very pleased with that. I am sure that God was pleased when he sent his son and they were just so great on the scriptures that they recognized God in the flesh and here is their Messiah and they murdered him. Oh, yeah. I bet you God is so pleased. Jesus, yes, Father, where are you? I'm standing outside the church, Father, knocking. Why ain't you inside? Because Satan's entertaining them. I ain't going in that mess. Well, just hang on a little longer, son. I'll tell you when to call your bride. <laughs> they think they're doing good in the church. And Jerusalem and Judah think they're doing good with God. And the axe is going to fall. And the axe is the battle axe, and I... I I think it's Ezekiel that brings up the battle axe. But, you know, Christians don't recognize what I'm saying. They don't read their Bible. I got a happy, good devotion today. <laughs> that sets me forth the whole day. One verse taken out of context. I'll give you a verse for taking out of context, right? I can do th all things through Christ which strengthens me. All right, go jump off a skyscraper. <sighs> go to Las Vegas, put all your money on the black. Go ahead. I can do all things and watch you lose your pants. Because thou has not remembered the days of thy youth. Gee, I think there was a church age that, that John wrote to, according to Jesus and his angel, you lost your first love. That's how this chapter started with Jerusalem. Do you remember what you were? Do you remember what I've done for you? And the application of the response to Jeremiah is, well, since we left off burning incense and cakes to the Queen of Heaven, we have not had this, we have not had that, we don't get this no more, and God says, it was me that gave it. You are not thankful. Oh yeah, we're going to have Thursday as a day of thanksgiving. Now hurry up and put everything away. Watch the ball game because we got to go out and, and camp out at the store to buy junk we don't need. And keep the receipt because the crap may not work or fit. And old Jesus in January, give us the money for the credit card bills that we rang up. Deck the halls with boughs of holly, fa la 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 la, la 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 la. Jeremiah says it's the Christmas tree, fa oh, la 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 la, shut up, up, don't ruin our fun. I, I, I don't need to worry what I'm saying, because people probably won't get this far in the video. They probably already turned it off. You have forgotten your Bethel. You have forgotten where God met you and you got saved. You have forgotten the day that you came to Calvary and you knelt at the cross and you got saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and you came out of that empty tomb as a Christian. What happened? But thou hast fretted me with all these things. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't there a fret not, fret not? God says, you threaten me. Ooh, that's a serious charge. All these things. Go back and read this chapter. Wedlock, whoredoms, holotry, imagery, idolatry. Now 
Behold, therefore, I also will recompense thy way upon thy head. Ouch. Go back and read and reread and study Lamentations, four or five chapters. That's Jerusalem getting it in the neck. Saith the Lord God, Thou shalt not commit this lewdness, that's a great word, above all thy abominations. Sin is a serious consequence. You know, Jesus Christ came to seek that which is lost. It was sin that brought Jesus to the cross. It was sin that beat the crap out of Jesus. Beyond recognition. And oh, how well we think we are doing. And God says, Really? <laughs> really? That's what you think is your best? 